Hi guys. It is a dark, gloomy, but at least warm day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Boston, Texas. I'm sitting here trying to untangle all of these planet-eating Christmas lights. Good Lord. At least they were bought from a thrift store. Uh, so anyway, it is, what is today? It is Friday morning, December 23rd, 2016. So I'm going to take a break from this job to bring you my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. This is really all I need to do for an ecological meltdown roundup rant. But anyway... <coughs> where I simply open up my email box uh, to bring you more information of how this planet has been heading for directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour while we've all been uh, wrapping Christmas presents. But, uh, did I say it was December 23rd, 2016? So, I'm going to start right here with good old Manga Bay. Good old Manga Bay. If my little dog would, would calm down so I can get to work here. This first article, uh, it's funny because I was sitting here lying in bed, dreading getting up, thinking about my, my rant, my depressed collapsitarian rant that will be I'll bring to you on January 19th about passing an eco-Nazi, looks at passing the baton from Barack Obama to Donald Trump, and then the lead-off article in, in uh, Manga Bay has virtually the same story, but instead of the U.S., they're looking down there at Brazil uh, with this hilarious titled story. This is one of the stories i got to get both my bullshit detector button and my no shit Sherlock button. So the new guy down there in uh, in Brazil, his name is Temer, T-E-M-E-R, I guess is this new planet eater, you know, who, who kicked out, uh, who overthrew that planet eating bitch, uh, Dilma Rousseff, just so you know who T-E-M-E-R is. Temer government set to overthrow Brazil's environmental agenda. Yes, uh, so, <laughs> this, you know, this is the same as Donald Trump government set to overthrow the U U.S.'s Barack Obama environmental agenda. It, it, it assumes that there was an environmental agenda in, in Brazil uh, uh, under Dilma Rousseff and the, and the planet eaters who came before her. Morning, morning. Bullshit, Which there was no fucking environmental agenda in, in Brazil, for God's sake. But compared, compared to this new motherfucker coming in there, just like what's happening in the U.S., eh, you know, suddenly Dilma Rousseff uh, look, looks like uh, Derek Jensen. Anyway, a catastrophic setback to environmental and indigenous protections was narrowly averted last week when quick actions from two federal deputies prevented the agricultural lobby from forcing passage of bills to authorize construction of three mega industrial waterways in the Amazon rainforest and elsewhere. I've been talking about this, but this is just a temporary victory, just like the Dakota Access uh, pipeline victory is a fucking joke that, uh, you know, it's hanging on. It's a very temporary setback to this. Don't worry. The Brazilian Congress will pick up the bills once again uh, after their recess in February 
and at which time, uh, uh, barring some miracle, uh, the Congress will authorize building many dozens of dams and industrial waterways in three Amazon River basins. Um, this is just the latest, you know, talking about this environmental agenda. So let's go back to 2005, uh, which I, was Dilma Rousseff in power then, or was it the planet eater who preceded her? Uh, it's going to sound a lot like 2005 deja vu all over again. In 2005, a similar bill was passed, fast-tracking the Belo Monte Dam and bypassing proper environmental evaluation. And no shit, Sherlock, today, 11 years later, Norte Energia, the energy consortium that built the Belo Monte, the Amazon Mega Dam, has now been charged with environmental crimes ethnocide and is under investigation for corruption. No shit, Sherlock. And yet another bill working its way through the Brazilian National Congress would completely gut the environmental licensing process for most infrastructure projects, while yet another bill would take away the hard-won protections guaranteed to Brazil's indigenous people in the 1988 Constitution. Uh, you know, this Tamer guy, good God, he sounds like a brother-in-arms with Donald Trump. Well, you know, what's, going, what's getting ready to come down in the United States is coming down in the Amazon jungle. It's coming down all over this fucking planet. We're fucked. You know, these planet eaters have just absolutely been handed over a planet just on a big turkey platter. Uh, it's in your face. They're not even trying to hide it anymore, people. Like, you know, at least with Hillary Clinton, uh, that corporate whore, it would have been at least a little more hidden. And with Dilma Rousseff, uh, you know, at least most of their shenanigans were somewhat behind the curtain, and there were, there were some smoke and mirrors out there, but, uh, but fuck. Anyway, I, I got about 300 stories, and I'm already, I'm just going to go till I hit 30 minutes. Uh, gee, no shit, Sherlock. Stone... Sand and water are the key ingredients changing the Salween River landscape and like uh, every other landscape on this planet. Uh, a construction boom in Myanmar is fueling demand for raw materials like limestone and sand. <coughs> Do you think so? Extracting these resources threatens ecosystems and communities along the river. No shit, Sherlock. And as we just saw in Brazil, here it is in Southeast Asia. This push for economic and industrial development is also driving plans to build mega dams on the river. Do you think so? Yeah, I love it when they, when they ask a question about, this is Papua New Guinea's. Is Papua New Guinea's oil and gas boom a blessing or a curse? Well, obviously, it depends on whether you are uh, one of Donald Trump's buddies, whether you're some fucking billionaire oil and gas investor, and developer, or whether you're some peon living in, uh, in in New Guinea, or one of the you know just one of our fellow Earthlings, is it a blessing or a curse? Uh, this deadly conflict is currently raging 
in Hella Province, home to the country's largest gas project. While this latest conflict does not directly relate to the gas plant there, some fear the facility could be targeted. Let, let's hope so. Uh, so while all that is bubbling, and uh, after a bidding war, after a bidding war between multinational corporations, which you better believe that Rex Tillerson, our new Secretary of State, it has his finger in this pot, plans are moving forward to begin exploration of additional gas fields. And for anybody who does not understand the term resource curse, which is certainly one of the terms from the glossary for the end times, resource curse, despite its wealth of natural resources, Papua New Guinea remains one of the poorest countries in the world. It is a classic example of the resource curse, a country where rich resources are associated with low levels of democracy and overall economic development in the country, as you know all of these uh, foreign national, multinational corporations from China to the United States to Europe go in there, rape and plunder, and, and get the hell out. Looking at this shit since 1492. There we go. Bastion of biodiversity protected in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, long as we're in Sub-Saharan Africa, this is a, a country you have never heard of. Sao Tome and Principe, uh, the second smallest country in Africa, in Africa, where, wow, human activities are threatening the unique biodiversity of the islands and are likely to become more pressing in the nearby future as the human population keeps on growing. Okay, they have, they have a bunch of stories in their Wild Life for Sale uh, series running through, going through country by country by country looking at the illegal uh, wildlife trade. In Colombia alone, more than 5,000, 5,000 illegal wildlife traffickers have been arrested this year alone. Uh, Jesus. Um, guys, there, there's so much here. Good Lord. I can see I'm not going to get very far. Just let me, I, I'm just going to throw a dart and pick out a few. How tropical deforestation and land use change is driving emerging infectious diseases. Uh, this is a study looking mostly at tropical uh, deforestation and how all of this uh, is correlated with all of these, the, these new infectious diseases showing up. Uh, waiting for the global pandemic to, to erupt. And you can have the same story about what's going on with the permafrost melting, uh, letting all of this shit, these new viruses and bacteria and stuff uh, that have been shielded from the human race. This is called Mother Nature bringing out her broom. It is called karma. It is called Mother Nature looking for that global pandemic to take us out. It's called chemotherapy. You go, Mama Nature. Here is study maps 187 
land conflicts as palm oil expands in Kalimantan, wherever that is, uh, in, in, in one little area, <coughs> 187 land conflicts. Okay, now their wildlife for sale story moves from Colombia to Bolivia, where we see jaguars are the new uh, trafficking victims in, in Bolivia. Up until 2009, the biggest threat to jaguars was habitat loss. Today, jaguars are more endangered even than habitat loss by Chinese demand for their fangs. There you go. I've mentioned this story earlier this week. 93%, 93% of the world's roadless areas. Roadless areas are less than half the size of Cincinnati. The researchers found roads have essentially fragmented the Earth's land service into 600,000 pieces and only 7% of roadless areas are larger than 100 square kilometers and of those, and of that 7%, only 9% are protected. The study's authors caution that the area affected by roads is likely much higher since many regions are not thoroughly mapped. Do you think so. Here's going down there, I guess this is in Peru, maybe, where this village poisoned by some oil spill. Two and a half years later, residents still have no safe source of drinking water and no way to purify their water. Yes, uh... A government commission has declared the oil spill cleaned up. Here is palm oil in sub-Saharan Africa as palm oil giant defends its deforestation in Gabon points to the country's right to develop. Yes, uh, the debate raises questions about what it means for a country to develop sustainably. You no, know, sustainable development and whether deforestation should be seen as a means to sustainable development. Yep, 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 yep. Here is Indonesia's forestry minister takes Greenpeace to court over freedom of information request. How about this? Companies are underestimating the risks of deforestation in their commodities supply chains. Just 42% of these big-ass planet-eating companies surveyed have even evaluated their supply chain in order to determine uh, blah, blah, blah. Jesus. Uh, according in, it, in its third annual ranking of what it calls the Forest 500, the UK-based think tank Global Canopy Program determined that given the current rate of, of progress, ambitious deforestation targets uh, are not likely to be met. Here now a wildlife for sale goes to Ecuador asking the question, 
is it possible to win the fight against wildlife trafficking in Ecuador? And I think we all know the answer to that question. What have I got? Ten minutes left to cover Center for Biological Diversity in Washington Post. All right, turning over to the to endangered Earth uh, from the Center for Biological Diversity. You know, tipping their hat to Barack Obama for uh, trying to run an end game around Donald Trump by. Uh, banning oil drilling in some of the Arctic and Atlantic oceans. Of course, uh, Barack Obama has just made a sacrifice zone out of the Gulf of Mexico, which, uh, which is not mentioned in this story. And so now, of course, the, uh, the, the, whole, world, the whole world is watching Donald Trump fill his cabinet with climate deniers waiting to see how they're going to try to dismantle this little end run that uh, Farrakh pulled. Uh, you know, this is, you know, it, this is good news this, about sea turtles that uh, more of this shit trying to make the shrimp trawling nets safe for turtles. There, there's some myth out there for people who eat shrimp still that uh, sea turtles aren't still being killed by the millions. So it's good news that there's that they're improving these net designs. But of course, nowhere mentioned in this article it is what's going to happen to sea turtles with sea level rise. Uh, You know, let's see. Here is let's finish as our segue into Washington Post. Tell senators to reject Exxon CEO as Secretary of State. Senators, senators, senators. God damn it! Would you listen to me? I'm telling you, senators, reject Exxon CEO. Rex Tillerson is Secretary of State. Sancho Panza, would you tell the senators to reject Exxon CEO as Secretary of State? Would you do your job to save the planet, please? Yeah, tell the senators. <sighs> Trump's nomination of Rex Tillerson, Exxon Mobil CEO for Secretary of State, is one of the most troubling cabinet nominations in U.S. history. Over the past 10 years, Exxon has used its enormous power to ruthlessly push for more oil and gas extraction, regardless of the environmental and human cost. Tillerson hid Exxon's own research documenting the grave danger of global warming while funding right-wing think tanks to deny its existence. This is Donald Trump's Secretary of Oil Deals. As we have the oil man in chief now uh, being the number one ambassador from the United States to the rest of the planet. D does anybody uh, not understand wh what it means to this planet to, to have fucking Rex Tillerson as the Secretary of State? D you know, I, I just long for the days of Henry Kissinger. Jesus. Okay, but we're going to wrap up the last few minutes just going down the Washington Post energy environment, uh, you know, which has just become how Donald Trump is killing the planet. The coming battle between the Trump team and economists over the true cost of climate change. 
Uh, Trump's pick for interior secretary can't seem to make up his mind about climate change. Uh, there we go. Energy Department backs huge Louisiana project to store carbon dioxide in the ground. Here is no shit. Oops. Trump says energy regulations are hurting economic growth. Here is four more officials charged with felonies in the Flint water crisis. Here is uh, the newest threat to climate science under Donald Trump. Here is Trump team asks the State Department what it spends on international environmental efforts. This is the latest sign that the incoming administration aims to reassess environmental and climate agreements, you know, between countries. Well, you, you know, uh, Rex Tillerson will obviously, obviously uh, be cheering on getting out of any one of these joke uh, environmental agreements. <clears throat> there is more research coming in about global warming and the Zika ep epidemic and every other epidemic. <coughs> Here is the Electoral College is thwarting our ability to battle global warming. Do you think so? Here is Democrats call for special counsel to probe Trump team's focus on climate scientists. And we'll just end up in Antarctica. I've already talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, scientists confirm that warm ocean water is melting the biggest glacier in East Antarctica. And as Antarctica and the North Pole and everywhere else uh, continue to melt, I'm going to wrap up this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant so I can start untangling all of these Made in China Christmas lights that I got at uh, Goodwill and figure out how to uh, celebrate Christmas in the end times. I will be back tomorrow with my Christmas edition of my Clueless Moron Roundup Rant for this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog.